Hey everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's about 8.45 on Saturday morning, January 25th, 2014. We had a really ugly day in the markets if you're a bull. And uh, we're going to take a look at, um, at what played out, kind of put it in a broader context, and see if it's time to panic or if, th if this is just, you know, more of what we've seen from time to time over the past four uh, four or five years. Before we take a look, just want to remind you that the website and the video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And please, make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look at, uh, at the mayhem. Look at the mayhem. Well, you're looking at this chart and you're going, it looks like it's just the S&P just going on up. Uh, yeah, and and that could be very well what we end up saying uh, at the beginning of 2015. What took place on Friday was really, uh, I think it was, it was probably the uh, strongest uh, bout of selling that uh, that we've seen since uh, uh, the early summer or early June of uh, well, let's just say June of, of uh, 2013, and it certainly felt like the wheels were coming off as the S and P was down more than two percent, the uh, Dow Industrials off more than 300 points. Um, my uh, my stocks came right down too, but did not trigger some some a few of them that, that I have stops in some call them blue chips. They're not really blue chips, but they're stocks that are liquid enough that that um, that I f I feel okay about having stops in them. Some of the other ones I wouldn't have stops if my life depended upon it. <laughs> but that said, this just puts it in the context that. You know, it's time for for a, a significant breather. As we look back in the past, uh, 2010. I mean, look, there's our uh, flash crash that took place, where the market uh, in in just uh, about a week, or, or in, in a matter of just a few weeks, lost from 1219 down to 1066, and percentage wise. That would be uh, a huge move if we were looking at that today. That would be like saying the, that the S and P is 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 hovering right around 1620. Uh, so that that's just to help put <coughs> excuse me to help put it into context. Um, looking at a one day chart, you can see that we have uh, some. Uh, resistance lines up here. I really had hoped that the S&P, before we had a significant downturn, which we may be setting up, um, Friday alone I don't think qualifies as the significant downturn, but it could be the setup for it, or at least one of the pieces. I really had hoped that we could have given uh, this line right here a run for the money additionally I pointed out let's zoom in a little bit on this chart I pointed out that we had been inside of a uh, rising wedge since last fall that really did not become apparent until late December and then we started getting some bounces here in in uh, the the first couple of weeks of January but what's interesting is Typically, in a rising wedge, you will have uh, six turns. I was hoping we might get a seventh because this resistance line and this resistance line just seem to line up so nicely up uh, around uh, the the high 1800s or 1900s. That uh, that hope now looks to be mostly a hope. Um. So where where do we where do we look at this now? Well, <clears throat> first off, the tendency of a rising wedge is 
to come back and test the levels that were in place as that wedge was first forming. So if you interpret that absolutely literally, then that would mean the rising wedge that we've been looking at here could end up taking, uh, as since we've broken out of it now, could end up taking the S&P down uh, under uh, or right at 1700. I say right at because we had this this little dip right here that was only a uh, that was very short lived, and and I'm I'm also looking at a rising line of support that has been very important, um, as I as I see it on the chart. And if this were to break, uh, to be frank, I think we would need to consider that that we may be setting up a top that turns the market over in a in a sig more significant way. And the reason I say that is because this line has its genesis, if you will, going all the way back to the market bottom of 2009. We only have two other touches, but they are both technically significant. We had the uh, the inverted uh, pattern in in the October uh, of 2011 I believe the low was put in on October 3rd okay then we have another touch on that line at the end of 2012 that was the uh, that was the low that kicked off this nice leg up and now we've got this line right here if you l look at this line and you also look at this top line you can see that all of the trading over the past five years almost has been constrained to a rising wedge. Now, the funny thing is, if you look at this line, that's not funny, it's sad. If you look at this line right here, and then you draw uh, another line, which I, which never really, I don't think necessarily uh, was was that important but a lot of uh, chart readers were saying right off the bat we were in a rising wedge that was gonna die <clears throat> and they thought the flash crash was the end of the run off the 2009 market uh, market low a lot of a lot of people were saying that is it it is game over and you might remember uh, if, if you have been following me on YouTube for a long time, way back before sp500chart.com, I started doing my videos back in, uh, in, in the fall, early fall of 2010, to counter that idea and to let people know that, no, we have a minimum target of at least 1350 and of course back then the market was trading in around trading around 1100 around a thousand flirting with getting under a, th a thousand at one point and of course that was based upon the size of this very large inverted head and shoulders back here it took a lot of twists and turns but that that uh, that pattern found its um um what am I what am I looking for found its target met uh, back back way back in 2011 everything since then has really uh, according to this bottom pattern back here everything since then has been gravy um, I in other words after uh, we the the S&P got above 960 back in the summer of 2009 there was a target of 1340 to 1350 that that persisted for almost two years and part of what I've been uh, explaining over the past few months has been the fact that currently we have no such driving target we have no real driving force in the market that says expect 1350 once we got above uh, about 960 back in uh, July of 2009 Literally, I, I sounded like a one-note Johnny in the in the Yahoo message boards and all that stuff, saying, "Wait for 1350. Don't short until 1350. Whatever you do, because it's gonna make 1350." And 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 we did. 
sorry to get too long-winded. I'll try to keep this briefer and to the point. You can see this uh, support line, this potential resistance line. I say potential because we've only got two touches, and they're way back when. Okay, this line has just been floating up here unmol unmolested, if you will, for uh, m more than two years. It was my hope that we tag that, and, and if we had tagged that, then that, I think, would have been probably a really good spot to look for a top to form, but we may be seeing a top form right now, and, it, and, it, and if it is what I think it may be, then we are setting up a potential test of this lower blue line again, which may not be a bad thing. Again, remember when you when you talk about what is the psychology of a rising wedge that makes it bearish, the psychology is pretty simple. It is the fact that there is a, as you can see, there are less and less percent returns as you get out into this wedge. Uh, in, in other words, the person who bought at the, the 666 low was able to get out at uh, over 1200 That is a huge return. Then the person who bought back here at 1100 well, if he's waiting to touch the top of the wedge, he hadn't got it yet, but there's still been lots of money to be made if you were in the market at 1100 even as we zoom in and look at it on a daily basis, if you're in at 1650, 1750, that's a good return. So as we look at where the bottom support line is and where the top resistance line is, there is still about 200 points or roughly 12%, 12 percent, 12 and a half percent of wiggle room in this wedge. I believe that is plenty enough of, uh, of oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Enticement for a long to get in if we tag this lower blue line. Now, <clears throat> I mentioned uh, it, it probably in, in Thursday's video, um, we were looking at this large rising well, not, not the big rising wedge, but the actually the smaller rising wedge that had formed uh, since fall of last year. I think we have to go to a two-hour chart here. A few things are going to move around a little bit when I go to the two-hour version of this chart. Just, just hang with it. So here's our rising wedge, and we closed just... When, when I adjust this line for where it should be, you'll remember in a Thursday's video, we closed just a hair above this line on Thursday after having broken the wedge just a little bit. Not enough to say it was broken, but now enough to say it was broken. So what are we looking at now? Well, there's another pattern. There's a couple things that that we can look at. One of which is uh, is is going to be kind of speculative, but the other one is is a pattern that is here on the chart, and that is if we look at the trading from the middle of October until the present, we are now putting pressure on this uh, line that has served twice as support back in uh, November and again in December. This line and this line define a broadening pattern. If you know anything about broadening patterns, they're not good. They, 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 they carry with them pretty much the same kind of implication as, 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 a, uh, as a head and shoulders. It's almost like a head and shoulders that has, it can have a flat bottom, it can have a rising bottom, it can have a slightly descending bottom. But the idea is the swings are greater and greater and eventually if that bottom line breaks then you get a move out of this pattern that is measured in much the same way as you measure a head and shoulders. So as we go into this next week, if this line breaks then then we need to measure what that would do and what what that would do is would likely be the signal 
that we are going to come down into the low 17, uh, 1700s. Uh, the, the target itself would be at about 1720. I'm just eyeballing it here. But it lo looks like the height here, uh, if, we, uh, if we break fairly, you know, if we break on Monday morning, then we got about a 1720 target. And um, we've got one uh, rising support line that, that could run a little interference along the way right here. And if we were to bounce on this line, then all that would mean is, guys, it would just mean I would need, and, and be prepared, it could happen. It would, it would mean that we may be uh, wanting to go back and define everything since June of last year. Instead of getting all of these little, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just get rid of them. I'll show you what it would mean. Uh, snap a parallel line here and here. If we break this support right here, but bounce on this line at about 17, currently in about the 1740s, maybe high 1730s, which is very close to 1720, then it could be that all of this trading ends up getting redefined as an ascending channel that is largely parallel coming off of our uh, getting over resistance at 1600, which was when we set the new, uh, when, we, we, when we were getting into uncharted territories in the S&P. So it's a rather complex picture. Uh, you can also see that this uh, broadening, potential broadening pattern uh, has an additional support line that, to be frank, is a bit fuzzy. Nothing lines up just right. We've got a touch, a touch, kind of, yeah, not quite a touch. Ooh, dip under just a little bit. So this is not a particularly, th this line needs to be an area of fuzziness that's about 20 points tall instead of a discrete line. So so I, I don't think, I don't think we, we could look at this line as providing anything that would do us any good with, with, with much precision. But all of this to say it's a complex picture. We've got two bearish patterns. We've got the big, huge rising wedge between our blue lines right here and here that goes back to the market bottom of 2009. Again, I think there's enough room to play inside of this thing for this large pattern to have more life in it. But then we've got this smaller rising wedge that broke down on Friday, uh, unmistakably on Friday, dipped below it on Thursday. But, you know, I wanted to give this, uh, this market the benefit of the doubt. But again, <clears throat> if you look at the broad picture, we've got to take out really before you could say this is a broken market. I think you got to take out this blue line and I think you got to do it with, uh, you, you have to do it in a pretty decisive way. If that were to take place, then I would be, uh, I would probably s say now is when we start to look for the possibility of, of, of seeing a larger pattern develop that may mark a major turn in the S&P. Of course, this has to break, and and we're not uh, we're not there yet. So, guys, as far as the week went, um, it was it was a it was a tough week uh, because we came we had a resistance at about 1850, and I kept hoping that we would overcome that resistance and we would make that run up to uh, up to about the 1880, 1890 mark based upon this having something of an inverted head and shoulders appearance to it. Um, that 1850 line, I took off the chart, but I don't think I should. I'm going to put that back up real quick. And the reason I'm doing that is, uh, sure, we broke this rising wedge line, but if we get a if we get a good bounce here, we may be coming back for a back test. Okay, depending upon if we bounce right here, 
And you might say that's a broadening top. Wouldn't it break at this at this uh, test? You know, typically that that is when they break is on is on that just like a a triple top or a head and shoulders top. That's usually when they break. Um, but I saw a pattern like this in Amazon a few years ago, <laughs> and it didn't break. It served as a continuation. I'm not saying that's what we're dealing with here, but again, it's it's not a conf it's not a pattern worth worth betting on until it is a confirmed pattern. Uh, just as you know, we were looking at 1850 as as a uh, as resistance up here, thinking if we break over it, then then that would be, we'd be looking at kind of this little inverted pattern here that would point to a move to 1880s, 1890. Well, we never got over that line. Okay, so so hopefully no, hopefully you didn't you didn't trade based on thinking yeah we're going to no, we didn't know anything until that line. Uh, we wouldn't know anything until that line got taken out. And just even though this looks very bearish right here, we don't, you can't really say anything until this line gets taken out. If it gets taken out, then I think we're we're gonna for sure come down and hammer hard on 1740. And if that gets taken out, then I think we'd likely come down and at least make the minimum target of this broadening top at about 1720. And could very well likely come down and test that long-term blue support line. So again, <clears throat> technical analysis at this point does not give us that that uh, that luxury of having the big monster pattern that tells us all is well because there's a pattern that says this market should reach 2200. We don't have that. We just have these smaller patterns now because we're we're up kind of in extended territory. So, at this point, all I feel that uh, that technical analysis can do, and it's worth doing, is finding your trend lines so that you know when it appears when these lines break, what to expect in the short term, because we, we're dealing with short-term patterns. So at this point going into the week uh, beginning trading on the 27th we we really if you're a, if you're a bull uh, I'll speak in, in those terms if you're a bull you really want 17 let's call it 1784 1785 86 you really want that to hold okay and <clears throat> if you get a bounce there and then you start to turn back over and come back down for this for this line as it as it is extended out to the right here then you want this line to hold let's put it that way if you're a bull this is the line I believe to watch for significant short-term to intermediate term implications because obviously if this breaks then this fuzzy line that I talked about, it will by necessity also break. And at that point, we would be looking at two uh, support trend lines, this one and this one. Uh, this one being the one that if it, if, if it breaks down, then we need to start considering looking for a major turn uh, setting up. Does it mean it would happen right away? But it means it, it could very well be setting up. And if it did break, more than likely, this uh, 18, uh, 50 and change that we saw could end up being uh, the market top for a while. Finally, I just want to say one more thing. Uh, if you look at the way these uh, patterns have developed, you'll recall we had uh, a, a uh, an inverted head and shoulders over here it did what it was supposed to do we had a regular head and shoulders top over here that really did not pan out okay but that was potentially a sign then we come up and for the past month or so really to a chartist what we set up up here in addition to the the rising wedge that broke we also uh, had and I believe I mentioned this in one of the videos this past week, 
we had the potential of this either being a bullish pattern propelling up to the 1880s, 1890s, or a double top. So we had a double top with, with 18, roughly 1850 as the top, and approximately 1816 as the, uh, as the uh, valley here. And the way you measure this is you would expect a move down that equals the distance between the two tops in that valley. Um, since this was a, a very brief momentary um, move down, I'm not going to measure that to the to the fifth decimal place because I think that if we come down to this brown line or to this teal colored line that should be a look like I said this is a fuzzy line but if we get into this area here I believe this top you could you could make the case that that is that's enough that that would satisfy the double top so that's why I think there is a chance we could get a bounce at this level right here but again if this dam breaks then we got to look down here and if this one breaks then we got to go even further before uh, I think we would see any solid reason to expect a, a good bounce. And, and these are all, uh, this in particular is a very technic very technically significant line. Look, guys, I apologize. I know I get long-winded. I do these videos sometimes, and I'll open up the chart, and I'll start to talk, and the next thing I know, there's just an unbelievable amount of time, and I feel embarrassed about it. So, please, thanks for watching. Thanks for, for, for putting up with, I guess you might say, how much I like to talk. So, uh, thank you for your support. Take care. Let's see what this week brings us coming up here. Do we bounce early or is this a more serious set of circumstances that are going to lead us to test the very fabric, really, of this bull run? That is a possibility and I think we need to watch that very, very closely. So, hey, thanks again for watching. Take care.